Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, in a previous video, which I um, did a while back, I actually made azeotropic nitric acid um, by using ammonium nitrate and sulfuric acid drain cleaner um, and some water, and we distilled that off, and um, it was about 68% pure nitric acid. Now, um, that's what I thought, but as I was using it, I realized that... Um, it actually probably wasn't 68% because it wasn't behaving exactly like that, which means that our ammonium nitrate that we used from cold packs most likely decomposed, like the byproducts of it, the ammonium sulfate, most likely decomposed to form um, ammonia gas, which is a base and probably neutralized most of our nitric acid, which isn't very good. And today we're going to be reattempting this, except this time we're going to be doing it slightly different. Here we're going to be actually, instead of just obtaining the azeotropic 68% type, we're going to be going up between 85 and 90% concentration. So very concentrated nitric acid, which can be extremely dangerous to handle. And um, at concentrations above 85%, it's actually recommended not to wear gloves with it, because uh, depending on the concentration, the gloves will actually burst into flames and be rapidly dissolved, and that would be bad on your hands. So you have to be really careful with this, um, but definitely don't omit other safety gear. Anyhow, so basically what we need to start with is something about 115 milliliters of sulfuric acid drain cleaner. And I'll show you the bottle up here. It's just this stuff right here. Uh, row time drain cleaner. It, uh, cont it says contains sulfuric acid. It's about 90% sulfuric acid. There's a lot of additives, so it's brown. But this can be picked up at Canadian Tire. That's where I got this. And it's not too expensive. Probably four or eight dollars. I can't remember the exact price, but it's pretty cheap. And um, then over here, we just have some sodium nitrate. You could, all, and I just ground it up in a blender. We made sodium nitrate in a previous video from uh, cold packs, and sodium hydroxide or and sodium bicarbonate, I believe. Um, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. I think we used sodium bicarbonate. But um, anyhow, we got about two hundred grams. So that's what I'm using here: two hundred grams of sodium nitrate that's been crushed up. But you could also use other nitrate salts, such as potassium nitrate. Um, I guess probably don't use ammonium nitrate because that could probably uh, neutralize your acid. You could use calcium nitrate, any nitrate salt. So get 200 grams of that. We'll need uh, 115 milliliters of 90% sulfuric acid or about 100, mil 100 milliliters of 98% uh, sulfuric acid if you have it. And... Um, then we just need a distillation apparatus because what we're going to be doing is combining these two and uh, heating it up and then distilling off our highly pure nitric acid which should come off somewhere between 60 and 80 degrees Celsius um, because azeotropic nitri nitric acid, the 68% type, boils at 120 degrees Celsius but higher concentrations actually boil lower than that 100% pure sulfuric acid, or uh, nitric acid, boils around 68 degrees Celsius but um, we're not going to be able to get that because we have water in our sulfuric acid. So we should be boiling somewhere between 60 and 80 de uh, degrees Celsius. I'm not exactly sure where. But that's just a bit of a ballpark for where our boiling point is going to be. So I'll set up my distillation apparatus outside, bring these chemicals outside, and then I'll meet you back. It is important to dry your sodium nitrate if you are using that as much as possible as it is hygroscopic and will absorb water out of the air. We want as dry of a product as possible so that there's as little um, water in our final nitric acid as possible. Um, so I'll set up my apparatus and I'll meet you outside. Okay, so I've set up my simple distillation apparatus and you, uh, if you were wanting to just get the azeotropic 68% type, you could add some water to this sodium nitrate, dissolve it, um, you could probably add about 100 milliliters or so, then add your sulfuric acid, then distill everything over. At that point, you'd be left with something between 40 and 60% nitric acid probably, which you could use a fractional column to redistill to get the 68% purity. And um, basically what a fractional column does is it just separates the um, uh, fractions between uh, the water and the nitric acid that come over, um, so that you get very pure water and then suddenly very pure nitric acid. Um, so that would be how to get the azeotropic type. However, that's not what I'm interested in, of course. I'd like um, higher purity, and it, it's much simpler to do because it boils at a lower point. It can also be diluted to any concentration you want. So, I have our sulfuric acid here, and this reaction when you, you first dump them in can be exothermic, so just in case, I'm going to be actually be adding it through the top with a uh, small funnel. Um, and this way I'm thinking that hopefully if any nitric acid fumes are produced due to the high heat, they should more or less stay in the condenser. 
So uh, we can start by beginning to add in some of our sulfuric acid. And I can already see fumes starting to be produced in there. Um, so clearly this is very exothermic and we are regenerating um, ni uh, nitric acid fumes. So I'm going to add the rest of that 150 milliliters of nitric acid and meet you back. So we don't have quite enough oil in here so I'll top it up with a bit more oil for the oil bath so it can evenly heat everything. And uh, then we're just going to crank it on to max heat. And over here in the uh, receiving end, I just put my acid bottle here because right after we're done this, it's going to be the highest purity that we can obtain. So I'll just be storing it directly into my acid bottle here. So that's it, where it's uh, distilling directly into. So we'll heat up the flask. We'll start to notice that things are going to start to come over. And this will be our uh, highly concentrated nitric acid between 85 and 90 percent probably. And um, at that point, we'll just collect everything into our acid bottle. And uh, yeah, the last thing I have to do is just put in a thermometer so we can monitor the heat. And of course, connect up the condenser so we can condense our uh, um, nitric acid. So I'll do all that and meet you back as soon as stuff starts coming over. One final thing that I really forgot to point out is it's very important to grease all your joints because nitric acid vapors can escape. And this leads to the second reason, nit nitric acid vapors are extremely corrosive. So we must use metal keck clamps, the uh, cl keck clips, because plastic keck clips such as this one here will actually be vigorously eaten by the nitric acid fumes and will crack and fall apart in just a few seconds. It sounds a bit far-fetched, but I've done this in the past, and that's exactly what happened. It was really horrible, um, and my apparatus started to fall apart. So um, it's really important to use um, metal keck clips, and um, if you only use them at the heating part of it, that's totally fine. You could probably use plastic ones at the receiving end, which is what I've done. But um, if you only use plastic cat clips, this will definitely not work. And greasing your joints will also, uh, with oil, will also help limit that amount of uh, nitric acid fumes which escape. Um, anyhow, so I've started heating it. I just need to connect up the condensing, and then, yeah, as I said before, I'll meet you back. So as clearly seen, we now have a beautiful red color. This is the nitrogen dioxide. And this should clear up in a moment, um, but the reaction has just started to vigorously proceed now. All of our nitrate salt has now dissolved into the sulfuric acid and, and has reacted forming our nitric acid. And uh, the temperature is increasing on this thermometer. It's around just under 60 degrees now. And uh, our vapor front, I can see it going up. So we've started to boil away our nitric acid. And um, pretty soon we should be starting to collect some drops. And hopefully this will clear up. Um, so yeah, I'll just let the re uh, reaction proceed until we've collected all the nitric acid and we're left with a solid chunk of sodium sulfate in our uh, flask here. And then I'll meet you back. Okay, so we're now collecting a fairly steady drip rate, which is quite good. And um, you can see that the temperature has climbed way up to... Or maybe you can't see. It's around 80 or 90. Now it's at 90 degrees Celsius. And I've just insulated with this with tinfoil to help keep everything uh, coming over quicker. Now, I was like, why is it going so high? And then I realized that uh, the reason is, is that I looked online and nitric acid um, close to 100% actually boils around 89 degrees Celsius, uh, I, I believe. You see, I'm not totally exactly perfect with all my uh, boiling points of everything, and I was probably thinking of a different compound. I believe perhaps ethanol boils with an azeotrope at, or maybe it's, I don't know, something else. Anyhow, so... Uh, yeah, as long as yours is between 80 and 90 degrees Celsius, that's probably where your um, highly concentrated nitric acid is going to be boiling at. And um, anyhow, so as you can see, the column has more or less cleared up, and our, we are collecting nitric acid. And the distillate coming over now is much clearer, but we had some uh, nitrogen dioxide from before, which contaminated the first few bits. So uh, we have this yellowish product. It's not really going to affect the purity a huge amount. Um, I guess you could swap out the receiving flasks, but it's not going to hinder any reactions or anything, so I don't see why you would need to. Um, anyhow, so yeah, I'll let this finish up, and uh, it is a good idea to insulate it because I was finding that um, it was having a hard time getting all the way over, um, mainly because my joint, um, I think nitric acid reacts with the mineral oil or something, it Started the mineral oil was being dissolved by the nitric acid, so it started leaking out the joint, so I had to put some sulfuric acid in there as a sealant and then insulated it was a big mess anyhow it seems to be working pretty fine now so I'll meet you back as soon as this is all done okay so when everything was done we're left with about this much nitric acid I'm assuming this is somewhere around hundred milliliters it looks like 
but uh, we can always measure that inside, of course. And it is slightly yellow, but that's okay. And my apparatus took quite a brutal hit. I mean, it's all black and ugly. And um, I do realize that the nitric acid attacked my um, uh, the little uh, rubber washer in there uh, for the thermometer and totally dissolved it, so that's gone. Um, I'll need to get another one of those. And uh, yeah, without this metal keck clamp, which is brutally damaged, this definitely would not still be together. You definitely need uh, metal keg clamps. Anyhow, so I've turned off the heating, letting everything cool back down to uh, room temperature. And at that point, we can start dismantling everything. Then I'll take it inside and show you exactly what everything looks like. Because, yeah, it took a pretty bad hit this time. Uh, so yeah, I'll meet you back when that's been done. Okay, so I just quickly took off the receiving flask. We can do a bit of testing um, while we'll I let the rest of the apparatus cool. Now this could give us some ideas of the percentages. Now highly concentrated nitric acid fumes when you blow onto it, so we could try that. So we'll... I think I saw some white fuming there. So it probably means it's above 85%. And um, the other thing is it's very reactive to many types of gloves, as I mentioned before. So here's some normal gloves which I would have worn, which I'm not, because apparently it can react vigorously with them. So we'll just see what sort of reaction happens. We take a bit of this and oh my oh whoa holy yeah that's why we don't put concentrated nitric acid on our gloves because ouch that would not be good if you got it on your skin you get a bad burn but then having molten burning gloves on your hand that would be even worse no wonder we don't anyhow I'll extinguish this uh, and then I'll meet you back Okay, so that's been extinguished, and that's a pretty good sign that our nitric acid is highly concentrated, above 90%, if it can actually set those gloves on fire like that. You can see it's such a powerful oxidizer, which is why it's sometimes used in liquid fuel rocket propellants. Um, anyhow, so we can actually measure the exact um, concentration of this by performing a density test. Um, and I found a density chart online of various concentrations of nitric acid, so by taking some of this and measuring the density, we can actually determine what the percentage is. So we'll take it inside, and then we'll do that. You could try that reaction as much as you want with normal nitric acid, but those gloves will just not burst into flame the same way. Highly concentrated nitric acid is really dangerous. I can't believe we actually made some. So, now, we will perform a density test. To do so, um, we're going to determine the density by how much it weighs per milliliter. Um, this can be simply done by weighing out a certain amount. I'll be, uh, or not, well, yeah, weighing out 10 milliliters of this, and I'll show you how to calculate the density in a moment. So, I'll weigh out 10 milliliters, or uh, measure out 10 milliliters, get the weight of it, and meet you back. Okay, so based on the fact that it was about 10 degrees outside, so this nitric acid is probably about 10 degrees, um, I figured out that it is. Uh, of course, density is mass over volume, so 15 grams is what 10 milliliters weighed. Divide those out, you get 1.5 grams per centimeter cubed. That's the density. Now, the scale, of course, doesn't go to anything else than, um, like, it doesn't go into any decimal points, so this isn't ex entirely accurate. Now, based on the fact that it is um, 10 degrees Celsius, the, our nitric acid, looked up a chart online and found out that um, we have approximately somewhere between 90 and 100% uh, co uh, concentrated nitric acid. So, um, if we had a more accurate scale, of course, we could get a more accurate reading. And it's definitely not 100% because um, we have water in there. I'm leaning somewhere over towards the 90% area. But um, anyhow, so this stuff's really dangerous. So, I'll place this back in here and show you what it did to my glassware. And um, yeah, now this must be stored very carefully if this was knocked onto something that was would react with it poorly, and there's a lot of things that react with poorly with uh, concentrated nitric acid. If this were ever to happen, you'd have a serious, serious issue on your hands, especially if there was an earthquake or something. So uh, be very careful where you store your concentrated nitric acid. Anyhow, so I'll get my, the rest of my glassware in and show you exactly what it did to it. Okay, so I brought all the glassware inside that I thought was severely, quote, injured, I guess. Um, one of them is the round bottom flask. It has a solid chunk of sodium sulfate at the bottom. And um, there's probably still some residual um, nitric acid that perhaps didn't boil off for some reason. And also sulfuric acid. Um, but it's mainly just sodium, sodium sulfate. And it uh, all crashed out of the solution to form this large, hard chunk. Thankfully, it should be fairly soluble in water, so we should be able to get rid of that pretty quickly. 
and then something happened, I don't know exactly what, but the whole flask got really black with some gum or something. Now, the next part of the apparatus over here, which is where it was coming out, you can see where it was leaking the black gunk or whatever. Um, I believe this was the reaction of the nitric acid possibly with the um, uh, oil that I used to grease this. Definitely grease it with something else other than oil. Um, and then the top part of it looks pretty bad. It got some sort of white crusty stuff and started to uh, dissolve the rubber. And now, that little rubber piece that was holding the thermometer it actually didn't do too, too bad. But it will have to get a new one. It's uh, looking pretty bad in there. The one Keck clamp that was closest to the, um, dis uh, the distilling flask, you can see it took some brutal punishment from that, uh, the uh, nitric acid fumes. If you used a plastic Keck clamp, it would not survive. Believe me, you really do need to use a metal one. And I haven't washed any of these things yet. They're just totally fresh right out. Um, and then there's a thermometer black gunk on that too. Thankfully with a bit of scrubbing with steel wool, most of that should come out hopefully. But um, yeah, just be aware that with this uh, flask, I would actually, or this reaction, sorry, would actually recommend not installing a thermometer despite it being very useful. Because it's going to destroy part of that. And also you have to uh, make sure not to grease your joints with oil because the nitric acid will react with it. You really do have to be careful during this reaction. Um, anyhow, so that is essentially how to make concentrated nitric acid and this is um, of course not fully a hundred percent pure which you could do if we had um, pure um, um, sulfuric acid however I don't want to waste all my pure sulfuric acid on this application um, and honestly you don't really need anything higher than 90 percent because anything more is gonna have similar rea reactivity results and um, it's just more dangerous and uh, basically I all I need this for um, is to make nitroglycerin and a couple other interesting molecules um, with just the 90% concentrated nitric acid. Anyhow, so once again, store this very carefully. I do not recommend that you attempt this unless you you know almost everything about this reaction because it is extremely dangerous. Do lots of research before you do this because you could seriously injure or kill yourself. Always wear safety glasses um, when dealing with concentrated nitric acid. Never wear gloves unless they are specifically made to withstand this because they will burst into flames and melt your hands, cause second degree burns, possibly third degree burns, and you're going to seriously mess yourself up. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Oh, wait, bye.